Ladies and gentlemen, peoples of all types, children of all ages, humans and non-humans, let's get ready for Sports Conspirators! Welcome, sports fans, uh, to another episode of Sports Conspirators. It's in the game. It's all a game. We should get that <laughs> EA. <laughs> we should get the EA Sports guy to do a cameo. Sports Conspirators. It's all a game. That'd be cool. More like um, it's all a scam. It's all a scam. Yeah, well, whatever. We'll we'll let him have take some creative liberties. Um, today volume 10 uh and first off i'm gonna lead this uh volume 10 while we might have some uh you know conspirator corners coming out where we do some recent events uh this show is going to be taking a two two week two week hiatus it's a little hiatus two week hiatus we just got to get a couple more in the bank and stuff so there will be more episodes coming don't you worry um just every time we hit that 10 episode mark uh, we're just going to kind of revamp and see what we can do better. Uh, so we're constantly having, uh, we're going to look at your feedback from these first 10 and you know, probably everything. Say. Yeah. Probably a full re- head to scale new hosts. I've been getting some <laughs> reviews for some, some close friends. What do they say? Tyrone was not happy about the screw job. Why? He, 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 oh, he's a Sean Michael guy. No, he's not. He's a huge Bret Hart guy. He's going to be even more mad about that. But he's just like, of course he knows how to write WCW into the camera. The guy's been been on screen for fucking years. Fuck that. That's he harped on that dude, for a while. No. And I was like, that's all. I thought it was stupid. Funny. Anyways, today we're talking about the Blade Runner. And that's oh, South shit. Africa's own Oscar Pistorius. Oh, you mean when it's talking about Harrison Ford? Not Harrison Ford. Not oh, Deckard. Fuck. Okay. Uh, we're talking about Oscar Pistorius. Now, I'm sure, you know, when you say Oscar Pistorius, you might not know who we're talking about. But, you know, when you refer to the Blade Runner in sports, uh, everyone knows who that is. He he blew onto the scene um, in 2004 after... Strided. Yeah, <laughs> strided. <laughs> bladed his way, cut through the competition. There you go. Um, I mean, not no, not much was known about him. But, um, you know, there's videos of him, and he bl- he kind of blew into fame at the 2004 Paralympic Games. The Paralympic Games are for P- amputees, um, and, and stuff. It, it coincides with the Olympics every year. Uh, and he ran, uh, I think he ran the 200, uh, 200 meter, and he went on to absolutely just murder the competition in the Paralympics that people were raising, you know, their eyes going like, Hey, this guy is running at speeds. We've never seen a double, double amputee. uh, Yeah. I think it's, I think it's important to touch on the fact, like he said, he's an, he's a bilateral below the knee amputee because he was, he was born with fibular hemimelia. So I guess he was born without both of his fibulas. Oh, I thought it was baby bones. (laughs) <laughs> no he, i i mean it's like i guess you have kind of have a choice you know when you're young you can either like get bone lengthening surgeries consistently right because that bone is going to grow or you have to get them amputated and unfortunately for oscar i mean he he was raised by a single mom it wasn't what you know he didn't come from wealthy means by any by any means so I think, you know, the more realistic option was to amputate both legs. But, like, even before this, like, before he started bursting on the scene, like, Oscar, growing up through school, played rugby, wrestled. Like, he did it all. His... And the only reason he got into running is because he got an injury while playing rugby. So, like, it kind of goes to show you what type of guy he was, he, right? He blew out his knee, and one of the um, on one of the rehabs was – uh, you should take up sprinting to re-strengthen things. And uh, so – he did and very quickly i i i don't know the exact date but it's i think from him starting sprinting and training as like a a a sprinter to his first gold medal at the paralympics i think it's probably less than a 16 month window it doesn't surprise me he starts he the guy was a natural athlete and you know rugby boys can run man get that he's probably playing on the wing too got jets 
and he so he he right away you know like his mom pushed him all through growing up like nope you it doesn't matter you don't you can do everything all these other kids do so he he was a little bit of a daredevil right like and you just one of those kids everyone knows one of those little kids that just it's another disabled superhero crazy so. crazy right a little crazy kid uh so right away after the 2004 paralympics you know words started to spread at his fast times because his times were close and better than some of the olympic runners uh that meddled so right away they started the debate started of if oscar pistorius could run against able-bodied runners so he had set his sights at competing at the 2008 summer olympic games in beijing now in the lead up to the games um you know you have to do trials and and qualifiers and stuff well you know to oscar's dismay the olympic committee basically came out and said like hey um they you know basically if you have any kind of artificial limb or anything you can't compete in the olympics um what it, it was any technical device that incorporates springs wheels or any other element that provides a user with an advantage over another athlete not using such a device so I they mean, said you the, don't the, have legs but you got an advantage well but i mean the prosthetic the prosthesis that he was wearing were called uh the uh what the hell were they called again they're called the flex foot cheetahs yeah all right <laughs> yeah like, come on now and so basically you know everyone who read this new rule that they put in in 2007 they were like this rule is designed to make sure oscar pistorius uh cannot compete in the olympics well they so, had they had good reason for that though because they, like they did when they did do the testing they it proved that his limbs like the prosthesis uh presented like his limbs expressed 25 percent less energy than an able-bodied person yeah so uh, and, and and i'm sure like, like, and like, i fact, remember right? i remember the news reports from that i remember um them talking about you know him not being able to compete because the legs gave him an actual advantage even though it doesn't seem that way and you can kind of it's 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 weird because you know you can kind of take the side of an olympics on this one where it's like as we get more technologically advanced and stuff you're not going to want people enhancing their bodies to be able to do these things well i mean better. russia's been doing it for a real long time <laughs> yeah well and we'll get into that uh, yeah. in due course um but oscar wanted to fight that because he what he said was it was unfair that in the 200 meter sprint um he didn't actually have an advantage that's what he's claimed and he claimed because because of his prosthetics and how hard it was for him to position on the blocks he actually was a very slow start like yeah, I guess it came down to the acceleration. Like he yeah. had a big disadvantage when it came to accelerating. But at top speed, he had an advantage. But able-bodied runners had way more of an advantage after the blocks. So he actually fought in like all levels of core, and he fought the IIAF rules and he and everywhere, basically trying to get you know this overturned. Um, he eventually appealed the decision of the court of arbitration of sports in Switzerland. And after like a two day hearing in May, they, they just, they revoked that original decision. So they said like, you know what, this makes sense. He, he doesn't actually have that much of an advantage. He should be able to, you know, try to qualify. And if he qualifies can be for the Olympics. The shitty thing for Oscar Pistorius is, is that he was, this was, such a long process of him running around that he actually didn't really train during this time for the Olympics because he was too busy trying to fight these decisions all over the world. So when they gave him the decision, it was a little too late. So he actually, when he tried to do the qualifies, he didn't qualify. He didn't qualify for the Olympics. So even though they were saying that he had a competitive advantage, at the end of the day, he didn't qualify for the Olympics you know 2008 summer olympics raising all that stink and you didn't even qualify bud come on yeah but he absolutely went on to murder the 2008 pair paralympic games he had a world record in the 400 he had uh gold medal in the 200 meter gold medal and a paralympic record in like uh 
yeah, the Paralympic record at 2008. Basically um, just cleaned up. Cleaned up. And, cleaned up. And it wasn't even, like, absolutely blew away the competition. So, like, this guy's riding high. Like I mean, and it goes to show you, too. Like, all these, I mean, let's say if he's if he's racing against people with also, like, bilateral amputations, they could have the same cheat as this guy's got, right? Yeah, you got so the he, flex foot cheetahs too. He's just he's he's this guy's just a step above above. So right away he's setting his sights on to the 2012 Summer Olympic Games. Now, because of this story, like this story of like this this you know this athlete this double amputee who you know fought against these huge organizations just to have the chance to compete, he became like not only a global like he became a global household name everyone knew who he was everyone knew the blade runner but in south africa during this time he he was the goddamn brad pitt of south africa like oh, yeah. he was one of their biggest celebrities now like this guy wasn't going anywhere he's getting endorsed he's on all the wheaties the cheerios you name it but he's he's on not only that though but he's on red carpets right yeah he's he's you know, he, he's hobnobbing with, uh, you know, all the A-list celebs around South Africa. Maybe and meeting some up and coming models. Yeah. He, you know, he, he's, 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 he's living the high life. He's partying. He's having a good time, but his set, his sights are set on making that 2012, uh, summer Olympic games. So in the four years, you know, he's training, he's smashing world competitions and come the 2012 Summer Olympic Games, Oscar Pistorius actually makes the Olympics. He qualifies to race. Now, unfortunately, he came dead last in the heat against able body runners. But still, he, he broke a barrier, right? He's the first ever double amputee to run in the actual Olympics against able body runners. There's never been a mo more monumentous achieved absolutely no i think that's fantastic yeah and in you know in a little bit of an upset at the paralympics in his you know in his event the 200 meter he actually plays silver so you know you know as much as he broke this barrier it, 2012 it's a little bit of a disappointment like he 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 doesn't he doesn't he finishes dead last as he doesn't qualify for the medal rounds and then he loses um to an up and comer, Alan Oliveira of Brazil in the Paralympics uh, silver medal. But, you know, there's a silver lining for Oscar Pistorius because now you thought his stock was high at the end of 2008. This guy is a global superstar at this point in time. Absolutely. So now, you know, like you said, he's rubbing with, you know, rubbing elbows with A listers. And uh, he, this is when he meets uh, South African actress. Uh, Reva, Reva Steenkamp, who up and coming actress. Very yeah. Talented. I mean, like at this point in time, from what I understand, Reva, she, she got really popular. Like she was, I guess the first, uh, Avon spokesperson in, in South Africa, she was doing modeling gigs and she kind of met, um, Oscar when they were working at, you know, he was a guest at a red carpet event and she was hosting it because she did a lot of hosting stuff for TV programs like, uh, Tropica Island of Treasure, like that kind of stuff. Like I kind of attributed to being like an MTV host. Yeah. Right. So that's kind of was her role. And not only that though, which is kind of impressive because she's, she's this aspiring, you know, uh, let's say actress model. She's also going to school and becoming a paralegal at the exact same time, Yeah, which she was successful doing. Right. Like, so this is like a very ambitious woman, young, you know, go get her and blonde, tall, like they're instantly the it couple in South Africa. Absolutely. Right. And it's, you know, they're, everyone wants to get a glimpse of them. Paparazzi's taking pictures of them. Um, you know, they were dating like three months when unfortunately tragedy struck on February 14th, 2013. So on Valentine's day, 2013, Oscar admitted to firing four shots from his nine millimeter piece pistol through the bathroom toilet door, killing Riva. He claimed he had mistaken her for an intruder. He was arrested and sub subsequently charged with murder. And the case went to, tr to trial on March 3rd, 2014. How the fuck do you accidentally shoot your girlfriend? A little bit of a fall from grace there real quick. Yeah. 
unbelievably. I mean, how do you how do you shoot your girlfriend? Well, I mean, I can we can give you the play by play as per Oscar Pistorius. Yeah, well, let you formulate your own decision from there. So, Oscar Pistorius claims that he he woke up hearing a noise. Yeah, so uh, around 10 p.m. All right. So, do, you know, do you, what time are you going to bed? So he just went to bed, I guess. Well, he's an athlete. He's got to go to bed early. Yeah, bed early. You know, wake I, up I, and I, I, I wakes up, gets out of bed. He closes the curtains, right? Because there's obviously some little light coming in, but. Upon closing the curtains, it then makes the it very dark in there. So he he hears a he hears a noise, right, and immediately thinks that there's someone, there's some sort of intruder in the house. Yeah. So like, just to put a little bit more context to the situation too, I guess he's having a really rest restless night, right? It's extremely hot this night, and he's been tossing and turning so much this uh, to the point where Riva, who's sleeping beside him. You know, he states that she's woken up too to be like, are you okay? Like, is there, you know, what's going on? And he's like, oh, don't worry, I can't sleep. And that's where he gets up, kind of closes the blinds, goes, turns on a fan. And then. Yeah, he hears a, what he thinks is an intruder. So, you know, as we all do, he quickly reaches for his sidearm uh, that he has. I think it was a taurus pt 917 cs nine millimeter semi-automatic pistol uh that he kept loaded beside his bed and he went to investigate uh and to make sure there was an intruder so he walks down his hallway to the bathroom where he can hear noise important to note too that he does claim that he's he's currently walking on his as he calls them stubs yeah so he's 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 a little person right now. He's not wearing his blades. So he's ho- kind of hobbling around. He's, you know, you can see court footage of him walking. And he walks to the bathroom. And in their bath, master bathroom, there's a separate, like the private toilet, right? So the toilet's behind a closed door. And that door is closed. And he hears the intruder in there. So he takes action and he fires four shots through the door at the intruder. Yeah, and and when he claims that, like when he shot, when he when he fired the gun, he was he was very, you know, adamant when he said he was two double taps, so bang bang, bang bang, right. And upon opening the door, he discovered that it was not in fact an intruder, uh, and it was his girlfriend, Riva, uh, who he, I don't think she died right away, but she. Yeah, she did die right away. Did she? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. She got one shot in the head. I wasn't sure if she died quickly. Shortly yeah, she, after. the 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 shot to the to the she, the bullet the type of bullets that he used mushroomed on impact. Yeah. They, so the first two, uh, they speculate hit her in the leg and the hip, and the second one hit her in the chest and the head. And the headshot was would have ap- would have hundred percent killed her. Yeah, uh, blew out the side of her head basically. Trigger warning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah so like we were saying right away there's questions like if you're having questions like why didn't you say i have a gun or don't go there so supposedly like if we want to way backtrack here supposedly when he did hear the noise he told her there's somebody in the house stay put roll down onto the ground okay mm-hmm. so he did he did attempt to let her know that something was going on and then that's when he went in and through the closet cleared the house with the and and the the crazy thing about this too is in the court documents in his in his statement he is meticulous on his actions of that night on how he moved through the house how he cleared room from room and and like it, it's wild like he he sounds like somebody who's been tactically trained the way he's describing this yeah and it's you know it's if that seems suspicious to you, when you start to look at Oscar Pistorius, it, you know, it, it's not actually that surprising because he was a bit of a gun nut. Like he, he had tons of registrations for register for, uh, uh, you know, a whole assortment of other guns. There's plenty of footage of him shooting at the gun range, um, you know, shooting watermelons with the bullets that he shot Riva with, uh, absolutely eviscerating these watermelons. Kind of um, describing, and also like when he shoots these these watermelons, he's vividly describing like that, you know, that's what would happen to somebody's head if you shot them at this range. 
little yeah, bit disturbing. And, and Andrew, you you actually had a, a tweet of his, eh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. Um, I, I guess Pistorius was pretty uh, was a pretty paranoid guy, especially growing up with a single mom. Like something I think is extremely important to note here is like this is South Africa. Okay. And especially at this time, this was the third most dangerous country in the world. Right. Yeah. A lot Where of gun violence. Tons of, not like gun violence, rape, robbery, murder. Like the, South Africa is by an all means a terrifying place. Um, so most people do have guns in their homes, right? Most people are kind of on watch. Like I've talked to people, you know, friends of mine who are from there. That's like, you look in your back seat before you get in your car, that type of stuff. So, Apparently, uh, November 2012, there's a tweet from Oscar Pistorius that says, nothing like getting home to hear the washing machine on and thinking it's an intruder. Then to go into full combat mode and shoot into the pantry. So he had a little bit of a, a, little bit of a history of just fucking firing off shots uh, in his house. Now, the other thing that I want to point out that you know can kind of point to maybe some of this deep seated fear of an intruder is that he was raised by a single mother who had a significant and I wouldn't say I'm not an unreasonable fear at all of an intruder at the time of breaking into their house. She had, you know, kids, she lived alone. So she slept with a firearm and at a very young age, she kind of instilled that fear into Oscar. So he kind of grew up with that fear of like an intruder come in. And some people say that because of his, uh, disability with his amputations it made him vulnerable yeah I'd say, if someone I, came in you know it's like let's be real like you just punt him right I, I would say it would put you in kind of like a hyper vigilant state right you're feeling like you're always vulnerable right which is pretty remarkable to think like this guy is a olympic athlete but at the same time he's you know vulnerable and terrified so the other thing too like you, you mentioned so you know his mom slept with a gun beside her. He was a little bit of a gun nut. So from what we understand is he's pretty comfortable around guns. And by some reports, maybe a little bit too comfortable. Comfortable to the point where he's a little bit negligent, right? Because um, during the court case, there was a report from an ex-girlfriend that said while they were driving together, Oscar would always keep the gun on the front, on the seat next to him. And they were pulled over by a police officer and the pol police officer walked up and was like, what, like what's going on with that gun? Grabbed the gun, racked it, took the bullets out. And Oscar was absolutely furious. Was like, don't touch my, you know, you, you don't have the right to touch my gun. Don't touch my gun. Anyways, I'm not sure if we got a ticket or anything. The cop left, but when the cop left, Oscar was so furious that he loaded his gun and shot it out of the, out of the fucking sunroof. <laughs> like that sounds pretty psychotic to me. Yeah. There there's a, also another reported issue with him where he was looking at guns in a restaurant with some friends and he was handed the pistol and he actually fired around off into the floor of this restaurant and then was basically like, yo, I'm Oscar Pistorius. I can't take the heat for this. You have to. And it, one of his friends said he did it. Well, it's crazy to me too, because like right away it automatically makes me think like this is must be some type of illegal transaction of a gun. Yes. Right. Because you're not gonna, like they, they're hiding it under the table. He's looking at it under the table and then the shot goes off. Like that's what the fuck's going like that's sketchy shit for an Olympic athlete to be doing. Well, and, and prosecutors right away were, you know, were not, they didn't have any kind of rose colored glasses on because they tried to, they convicted him, uh, charged him with culpable homicide. Absolutely. Cause there were some major red flags for this incident. Like, first of all, Riva, who was in the bathroom at the time, was fully clothed, right? So it doesn't really make sense for him to be like, hey, you know what? Stay in bed. I'm, I'm going to go, you know, have a look in the bathroom. Gets no response for her. Doesn't go back and check. Like, hey, are you okay? Like, did you, like, initially, if you're sleeping in bed and you hear something crazy, the first thing you do is look over to the person in bed with you and be like, did you hear that? Yeah. Right? Right? That doesn't would do be that. the normally th normal thing to do. And not only was she fully clothed in the bathroom, but she also had his phone and her phone in the bathroom. Yeah. Right? Bizarre. Then he claims that he shot her in a double tap style, right? Bang, 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 bang. But one of the experts that they brought in, the prosecution brought in, 
disprove that fact because how how far apart the entry wounds were, right? If it was a double tap, those wounds would have been close together, but she was hit in the hip, in the leg, in the hip, in the chest, in the head. Yeah. Right? It's... And then you put that together with a neighbor's testimony stating she heard loud blood curdling screams from a female, right? Followed by the screams from a lower pitch of a man and then screams from a female again. And that's why the neighbors got concerned and ran over to the house. Right. Cause he's claiming he didn't have time. He just shot the four shots. Didn't hear her. Nothing. Just bang, yeah. bang, 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 open the door. Oh my God. It was her. Right. Obviously there was something going on. Why was she screaming? Yeah. She, and then she had time to scream after getting shot the first time. So obviously there was a break in the gunshots. Right. And my favorite part of this whole case is the fact that he's like, the neighbor's like, hey, listen, we we heard, uh, clearly we heard a female scream. And Oscar said, listen, sometimes when I'm really scared, I scream just like a girl. That's <laughs> <laughs> literally on record. That's, uh, I mean, it's, it's not the... Uh... It's it, it's not the best defense I've ever heard. It's not terrible though, but at the same time, they heard t- t- like they. I wish there would have been clips distinctly... of him in court screaming, like to show them. You yeah, know, he like like, like, can you do it? Blindfold do it the witness. Yeah, have to listen to him fucking scream. Yeah. So, you know, right away for me when I'm when I'm thinking about this, and you know, I kind of there's kind of two sides for me because I'm like, you know, you have this person who's got this these disabilities and stuff basically this this golden this golden boy of south africa you know who could do no wrong and could it be that you know he's just a very anxiety ridden person that's so worried about an intruder that he paranoid paranoid that he genuinely you know would make this mistake and you know but he's actually a good person but then when you start actually digging into you know anything further than the surface level of oscar pistorius we've already kind of talked about like some of the firearms things where you're kind of like well it's you know people like shooting guns we got friends that shoot guns nothing wrong with that but there's other there's like other clues that kind of pointed out that oscar was maybe not always on the up and up Oh, you mean it, the fucking random desk pops and out of his sunroof and his yeah. car? <laughs> the other thing is, again, we we quickly mentioned that he he, you know, lost uh, the gold medal in the 2012 Paralympics, and he lost to Alan Oliveira of Brazil. Now, again, one of the things that you have to remember with Oscar is he fought because people told him that his legs, his his blades, gave him a competitive advantage and that he shouldn't be allowed to compete and he had a fight against that for eight years till to get his dream of competing in the olympic games and immediately upon losing the gold medal to alan oliviera oscar pistorius went on the fucking rant of rants claiming that alan oliviera's blades uh they were too long. They were too long. They're they not were, regulation. They were illegal. They gave him a competitive anchor. They shouldn't be allowed. He shouldn't be allowed to compete with them. Basically spouting the exact same shit that he fought against immediately after. Like, And instantly people were kind of like, Ugh, that's kind of... Uh, it's not a good look. It's not a, it's not a good look. Right? I mean, it's not as bad as the look that you had... You know, you got when you murdered your fucking girlfriend, but still, it's kind of shitty. No, and then you know, there's the there's a there's a also a boating incident before the 2012 Olympics. Yeah, I see. I kind of wanted to touch on that because I think that kind of leads to a little bit of speculation as to you know maybe you know we we're going to touch on this quite a bit. I think in sports conspirators, but maybe you know some of this paranoia and gun obsession and quickness to anger and violence is stemming from potentially a head injury, right? Because in 2009, uh, Pistorius smashed a speedboat into a pier uh, at the Val River. He was actually airlifted to the hospital. He spent three days in a coma. Uh, He had a broken jaw, several ribs, and and he shattered his orbital bone, right? So that's massive 
facial head and facial and head trauma. And like one of the things that we know is that the frontal lobe is located in the front of your head, right? It goes with the name. It's the largest lobe in the brain. And of its many functions, it's responsible for like conscious thought, voluntary movement, personality, word choice, organization, and behavior. And significant damage to the frontal lobe can impair your your judgment and attention span, organization, that type of shit, right? And that can severely change the type of person you are. Yeah. Right? I mean, and he was pretty young at the time that it happened as well. And like before this, before 2009, I mean, this guy's got a pretty crystal fucking clear record. Yeah. You don't really hear much about it. And then all of a sudden he's a, you know, he's a fucking gun nut. Quick to um, anger. Quick to anger. There's, they have proof of text messages of Reva between him and Reva. And Reva's like, I'm scared of you. I'm worried what you're going to do to me. And this is crazy because they only dated for three months. Three and, months. And the thing is, like, again, CTE, like, I mean, we're going to get into it a lot, but there's there's a long list of people who, you know, have had these traumatic brain injuries and CTE symptoms who have done terrible things. Would have been. Right? Uh, and if you don't know, uh, uh, chronic traumatic encephalop encephalitis, no, encephalopathy. Oh, fuck. I'm screwing that up. I got to look it up. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Chronic. Uh, but it's. You know, so it, you kind of, this person kind of changes, right? Into, you know, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Could, could you imagine dating someone for three months and then being like, I'm scared of you. Like, I'm scared of what you're, you've been dating for three fucking months. And listen, I don't want to be that person because I don't know what the fuck was going on. And maybe this was love at first sight or anything like that. But I feel like, I just feel like maybe the fact that they were this, it, golden couple made her stick around a little bit longer than she should have. Well, I think they were, I it's, part of me thinks that they were together because it was because like you said, they were the eight couple because yeah. there was also, there was also allegations of Oscar like flirting with other women and potentially meeting up with other women during this time. Right. Which then leads me to believe that maybe one of the reasons she was, she had both the phones was because she had unlocked his phone. Yeah, and everybody knows, like, if they're going through your phone, the only way to get them to stop is by shooting them, shooting them four, times, tap, four just times, killing them, murdering them, right? Like, um, I just don't, I just don't, I'm, like, I feel like he was fully aware that she was in that bathroom at that time. Like, even, let's say there is an intruder in your house, and he runs and he locks himself in the bathroom, right? And you have a gun. Why can't you just call 911 and sit there with your gun pointed at the door being like, don't fucking come out? Well... And correct like me that, if I'm wrong. And correct me if I'm wrong. I I might be mixing this up in my head, but didn't a ballistic analysis determine that more than likely he fired the shots with the blades on? Yes. See now, it's it. I did. I do remember reading that. Right. So that's like that's premeditated. You're because, not sleeping with the fucking. You're not sleeping with the blades on. Yeah. Well, right? maybe actually maybe I don't he does. Know. Yeah, right. I maybe don't he, he's like I'm the blade runner, baby. Yeah. I wear them all the time, but he. It, right, but that goes against what he said was he wasn't wearing them, so he was vulnerable. You know, vulnerable. But you know the spoiler alert: the courts, you know, after this long circus trial, and there you can fucking almost watch every the second of thing. it online, everything um, of it online. Uh, they found him guilty. They found him guilty of culpable homicide like reckless use of a firearm, a bunch of other charges. Yeah, but it's crazy though, because like he ended up, so he, they ended up getting, he gets charged, right? For culpable homicide. And then they dispute it. Right. Cause it wasn't premeditated. Right. They're like, okay, listen, they didn't give him first degree murder. Yeah. He got culpable. And then they're like, he, he gets, he goes to jail and he gets released with time served and good behavior. But his legal team is fighting it by the meantime. In the meantime, so he's on like house arrest or whatever. Yeah. So he was he was originally granted. Originally, it was he was sentenced to five years, and they were fighting that. And he was gonna get, he was eligible for early release, and and all this. I, I'm pretty sure he had already he was already on house arrest at this time. He was out. Yeah, I th I I think that's the case, and. Yeah, yeah. No, he was 100%. He was released from prison. Yeah, he was released, and, and they're still fighting it. Yeah, and the prosecutor basically applied to the sentencing judge 
they appealed this and they said, listen, a five year prison term is unbelievable. Um, they said if this was, you know, they said if this was a person of color in your courtroom, similar, they would be, it, it would have been life, much longer sentence. And the, the appealant judge was like, yeah. And without Oscar even being there, he sentenced him. He changed the length to 13 years. And you know, what's crazy though. In a, uh, in a month's time, he's eligible for parole. Yeah, that is 2023. That is crazy. Um, now, you, you know, he's always said he's never, he's never, he's never said he did it. He never, he's never admitted to it. He's always stuck by, you know, his stuck to his blades that, uh, this was an accident. This was all a misunderstanding. It was an accident. I didn't mean to do it. Um, <laughs> do you think there's any chance of that, Andrew? I no, personally, I do not. With with the information that I've been given, which is a fucking shit ton, considering how much of of it's available, for I just no, I I say he did it. I I just think you'd have to suspend belief on a lot of just logic, logical thinking, because my thing too is like, hey, if you get up, you get up and you shut the blinds to then make it pitch black, then you don't turn on any lights. Right, and then you cruise to the bathroom in the dark. You hear it, and you just shoot through the door. I'm like, that who, doesn't make any sense. Who does not yell out? If you're in the bathroom, you better fuck it. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. Let, and you know, like, how do you not yell out to this person, being like, "I'm gonna fucking shoot you"? I have to a me, gun. There, there's two cases here. It's either it is like literally, it was a, it was an accident. He didn't know, and he is a fucking gun nut that is aching, aching at the chance to fucking use his firearm. Yeah, at any fucking chance. Right. So he doesn't he doesn't take the fucking precautions necessarily and just goes, you know, anyways, I start blasting. Yeah. Right? Like he's that type of fucking guy. It's either that or he murdered her purposely. Either well, way, it's both. They're both fucked. See, and I really looked at that. The part of just him being a gun nut and then, you know, a, a fucking buffoon. Um, but the, the the parts that don't add up are the screaming, right? Like the neighbors hearing the screaming, him trying to say that. So that that either means they fought before that or he shot her. She screamed, and then he shot her again. Totally. Right? Oh, yeah. No, and it, it, it literally, like, she's dressed. This this happened in the early hours of the morning, right? Yeah. They've obviously been up all night fighting. He probably had his blades on because they're up walking around fucking, you know, arguing. Yeah. She's dressed. She gets pissed off, grabs his phone, goes in the bathroom to either go through his text messages, whatever, and he I, loses it and, and that's shoots what I his think. door. I think, he, I think he flew into a rage at the accusations and then her having the phone uh, in the bathroom. I imagine she was going through his phone and, you know, who knows what's on it. We know that he was messaging other girls, um, right? And, and she knew that and, and she had been messaging friends that she, you know, she was scared of him. And it just seems like he murdered her. It's like... The, to look at this as he's some sort of gun nut buffoon that did this by accident. There's just too much leaning the other way. That's not answered for one of him saying he's not wearing his blades, but ballistic saying he probably was wearing the blades. Um, the double tap. Hit. Like that doesn't line up at all. Right. The screams, which then like, you know, part of you might be going is like, well, how is this a conspiracy? Well, the conspiracy is how the fuck did he get such a lenient? You know, the fucking South Africa's golden child. Yeah, it's he. It's not, and you know, we. This has happened to him before in that boating crash we talked about earlier. They actually found alcohol on board, but they didn't test him because he was Oscar Pistorius. That's why they didn't test him. That's why the cops said that. The cops said that. Well, he was Oscar Pistorius. We didn't. We didn't run his blood. We didn't check his blood. I will, I will counter that though. But like, does it really relevant? Like, you gave him a DUI because he was riding his boat. Like, the guy's in a coma, right? He didn't hurt anybody else. Would it affect his his image? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, like, yeah, but I just don't like. I, I don't know. It, it just goes to show you, maybe he's a little bit of a fucking loose cannon, like you said. Grew up as a loose cannon. You know, I just. I just don't see any world where this was an accident, and if it was an accident. This guy is a hair trigger, and he wanted to. Yeah, he wanted to take somebody's was, life that night. That's yeah. that's the way I feel. 
but I again I think I think the the logical part of my brain goes they were they were in a in a domestic dispute earlier in the evening right again she was she wasn't wearing pajamas she well was, how how does she get from the bed where he says she was when he got up to that fucking bathroom without him noticing he was too busy lock and loading I don't know like it just doesn't make any sense to me man yeah it, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, it just, it, it's you, you have to suspend belief on so much part. Like, okay. And then also she was locked in the bathroom. Yeah. Right. He had to break into the bathroom. If you're staying at your significant others play, like you're dating them, I guess maybe if she was too scared that he was going to walk in on her, taking a dump, maybe like, I don't know. You don't really do that. Like most of the time you're right. Like she's, she's in there. She's fully clothed. She's scared of something. She's hiding. Well, especially with two phones. Yeah, I don't know. Why would you have both phones? Right? Or okay, let's let's do let's let me give you a counter scenario here. Um he wakes up, right? He wakes up, "Hey, get on the ground." I someone's in the house, right? Someone's in the house. Hide, get under the bed or whatever. He 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 said, roll onto the floor, roll, roll onto the floor. He goes and he checks the, the closet or whatever. He doesn't notice that she goes and takes the phones cause she's scared. So she <laughs> called 911, but she didn't call 911. No. Right. <laughs> so it's maybe she didn't have time. <laughs> she got time I, to get dressed though. She had time to get dressed. Yeah. It just, again, you just, every part of me goes like, this was at least, if not first degree, it would. You know what? I will say it won't. Based on everything we know, I would say it's not first degree because that's premeditated. I don't think it was. I think it was the heat of the moment. So, but like the fact that he, you know, got the culpable homicide, is a travesty. So, and the fact that he's going to be out, potentially out in three weeks, a month time, Sad. is uh, you know, very. Very, very sad. Now, um, you know, Riva's mother actually forgave Pistorius during the trial. And um, she's actually, yeah, I don't wow. know how. Like, Oh, my just, God. And she's Better woman than me. I, yeah. Said, there's no way. Yeah. Was, and uh, they've actually started the Steam Camp Foundation, and that's to prevent similar cases from happening. But I'm like. What? I, Getting murdered by your... I, yeah, I think it's just domestic... Do, I'm guessing it's with domestic violence. Okay, but, I hope so. Um, I hope they don't buy that <laughs> shit. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually... You know, it's always interesting to see these people that, you know, have it all, right? And then just these tremendous fall from graces. And it just goes to show you that, like, you know, these people are not, like... A lot of these times you see them and you see these reports of who they are. It's not who they are. It's, you know, well, what you and, think who they are. But you could be right. Like this this is a guy who by all means for the last little bit has had it all. We've re we've seen how this man reacts to losing for the first time. Mm -hmm. Crazy outbursts. Well, maybe Reva's like, hey, I've busted you. I'm leaving you. Get dressed. Leaving. I'm yeah. out of here. Right? And he's like, you're not going anywhere. Goes crazy and shoots her. If I can't have you, nobody can. Yeah, and and again, we're we'll, we'll get, we're gonna get into some more CTE down the road, but like, you know, mix that with some CTE and you know, f flying into a quick to anger and into a blind rage. Um, I will say that like, part of that was not necessarily that was brought up, but he was found fit for trial by a psychiatrist because I can't remember what exactly they were trying to say he had some sort of anxiety or something. Uh, I had a note for it. Um, I see. And that's crazy to me because this guy is able to perform on the highest stages. Yeah. Right. He's able to perform on the highest stages, but you're telling me he can't fucking stand trial like that. That would, I find that that's an awful fucking argument. Yeah, he had generalized anxiety disorder, so they were trying to see if he could, was fit for if he if he could be held criminally responsible for the shooting. Yeah, but he can go run races in front of fucking you know thousands and thousands of people and be on TV and do all this other shit, walk red carpets like weak. Yeah, it's um, you know, and it obviously you know 
<laughs> destroyed his legacy and he he kind of did that himself too at the end, tail end of 2012 with you know basically doing everything he set out to destroy he did to another athlete um it's just a, it's it's truly a, a sad story all around absolutely but it just goes to show you man these people they're not uh not all of them are idols and not all of them are you know it, it, as good as they seem and sometimes you scratch the surface and there's uh monsters beneath with blades <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um anyways that's going to be it for sports conspirators 10 uh we're going to have some more stuff for you you can find us at uh at sports conspirators on instagram and tiktok at sports cons pod on twitter um and um i think we're going to do a, a big theory something where you'll be able to get all our stuff once stay tuned for that we don't know that's not up to us it's that's above our to, heads that's that's up to zo um, anything else hey if you want what do you want to hear for the next end give us some feedback uh shoot us some messages on instagram let us know uh, what cases you want us to cover and if and you think we're wrong let us know yeah you I'd think love to oscar, hear your side you think he's innocent what do you think happened that night with Reba? You, you got a box of fucking oscar pistorius wheaties at your house is that you know let us know yeah. cool. you a huge blade a bleedy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let us know. Anyways, Zell, ring those bells. Oh, peace. Thanks for listening to Sports Conspirators. Brought to you by Big Theory Productions. For more shows by Big Theory Productions, search Big Theory Productions anywhere you get podcasts. Audio production, mixing, and publishing by Meteor Sound Studio. Meteor-recording.com.